And we're back. Is it that time already? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, it's time to record our podcast. We may as well. This is one of our side projects. It's a good project. And like everything else in life, it has both pros and cons. Yeah, for sure. Like one pro that I've really been appreciating lately is we can kind of express ourselves here in a, in a meaningful way. Yeah, I like that. But I also enjoy the pros of money and fame. Or in theory, that at least is one of the pros I'm looking forward to enjoying. <laughs> yep. You never can have too much money or fame. It's one of those weird things in life that somehow just seems to work. I mean, money, of course, can't buy happiness. But if you're going to be depressed... You might as well do it on a really high-quality chair or couch, blasting dope-ass depression music on whatever the latest Bose has got to offer. Listening to Bright Eyes on some crappy airline headphones just just doesn't hit right. Yeah, so money's not all bad. Yeah. In fact, we are going to start monetizing this podcast. So pretty soon, we should see a decent amount coming in. We've been reaching out to a fairly large number of podcast networks in order to have our podcast on, uh, well, on their network. (laughs) Some dream networks include Earwolf, Forever Dog, and so much more. Yeah, it's been a huge bummer striking out with many podcast networks. I feel like we speak a different language or something. Half these execs I've been hitting up just don't seem to get who it is that we are and what it is we're all about. Hmm. But, I mean, getting on one of these networks would actually really benefit y'all. That is, you, our listeners. I mean, you get high production value, new lit features that sound even better, bonus material, and sure, yeah, the occasional ad. But these ads are actually going to benefit us in terms of the pocketbook. Basically, the network, the way it works is, once we're accepted at least, uh, They'll hook us up with some dope sponsors. Dope sponsors? Like they're sponsoring pot? No, dope. Like uh, excellent or terrific. Dope. You know. Ah, yeah. Got it. Sorry about that. I got it. Got it. Well, that's cool. Um, How much money can we pocket? Mm, well, how much money you pocket from a sponsor depends on the number of downloads their episodes earn. So. Mm. Sponsors generally pay on a a cost per meal basis. Meal is Latin for a thousand, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So rates range from $18 to maybe $50 CPM. The hugely popular podcast can pull in a hell of a lot more. So, yeah, we need more listeners. Yeah, this is where y'all come in. Um. We need them desperately. Well, right now we're off to a a solid start. What the hell are you talking about? The last several episodes, we've only been getting 120 total listeners on average. That's not going to help us out much in the pocketbook. Yeah, but (laughs) Up Close and Personal is a relatively new podcast. And these things do take time to grow. It's just a simple matter of... Uh, each of our 120 or whatever it is, regular listeners telling two to three friends about the show. I mean, okay, you guys don't need to cold call anyone or anything like that, but definitely call people you're comfortable talking to. You don't have to be pushy or put too much pressure on them, but also you can just text. Like, personally, I have a lot of social anxiety. But I found it very helpful to text a few family members each week to let them know I just made a new episode. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, this goes without saying, but normal SMS rates and data may apply. So, yeah, obviously, we're not responsible for any costs associated with this stuff. But, um, yeah, no, we would highly encourage the hundred or so people who tune in week after week to just reach out to, I don't know, three to five or even more. Like, Honestly, we're not going to say no. We're not. If you tell us, hey, I, I spoke to 80 people about Up Close and Personal last week, 
I wouldn't be angry or anything like that. <laughs> as long as you wore a mask. Like, oh, great. You just spread our podcast to 100 new people. And the dangerous upper respiratory infection that's been a dominant theme in the cable news cycle. Yeah, like, let's say each of our listeners reaches out to 80 people. So by the following week, we'd have um, 9,600 listeners. It's not bad. Obviously, not all of them would be repeat customers. Some of them would get bored by our bullshit antics, but let's say half of them subscribe and become tight in our community. That's 4,800 new regular listeners. Okay, so that's okay, 120 and then 9,600 divided by two. So that's 4,800 plus 120, 4,920. Okay, then times 80, so the next week. So that is 3,000 or 393,600 listeners actually for week three. Um, Obviously, only half of those will keep coming back. So, okay, so that's like um, 196,800 regular listeners. All right. So, yeah, then just rinse and repeat. We have this process and it works. So you just reach out to 80 folks, obviously from a distance, (laughs) you know, family, friends, coworkers, you could do um, neighbors, friends of friends. Um, yeah, even extended family members. Basically, just start going through the contact section of your cell phone. Um, yeah, you're probably going to want to aim to get to 80. You're going to want to start thinking of every person in your life as someone who could potentially listen to at least one ad that we've included in an episode that makes sense for the demographic of Up Close and Personal. Okay, so... I mean, ask yourself this. Uh, Do you have any friends who drive by billboards ever? Okay, well, they're already fine with ads, clearly. (laughs) What's one more added to the mix? Yeah, and um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to like price ads differently depending on where we place them within the episode. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, so it's called pre-roll ads. They're going to run at the beginning of the show, usually for about 15 to 30 seconds. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have these, it's called post-roll ads, and they run at the end of the show, also about 15 to 30 seconds. And yeah, both pre-roll and post-roll are worth the same to advertisers, so those will net us a uh, similar amount. Mid-roll ads, on the other hand. Yeah, okay, <laughs> take it away. Matthew, you, yeah, you should be the one to talk about mineral ads since they were your idea. Yeah, <laughs> mineral ads are a bit more valuable because <laughs> the audience is captive at the time. Like sometimes the sponsor for a mineral ad will give us a script to read, and other times they'll just say, "Take it away, give us a ton of flexibility." <laughs> But either way, our listeners will be pretty invested in our show at this point, and we'll have no choice but to listen to these ads. And perhaps they'll even end up paying for the product or service that we're advertising. Yeah, whatever. We can dream, we can dream. I mean, ads would be really great and everything, but right now, we're ad-free. Let's just focus on you know doing us. So, anyways... uh. How you been doing, dude? Eh. What's been, I don't know, like floating your uh, proverbial boat lately? Eh. I don't know. Been reading about affiliate marketing a bit. Uh, yeah. What about you? You staying out of trouble? <laughs> Are you getting into anything cool lately, buddy? Oh, cool. What have I been getting into lately, you ask? Well, how much time do you have, honestly? <laughs> Alright, I'll just say it. Um, You know how I'm married, right? Yeah, roger that. Well, you know. What people do who are married? (laughs) I think I... Yeah, wait. (laughs) Dude, I'm trying to conceive. Dude. Whoa. Whoa, that's awesome, man. How long have you and your wife been trying to conceive? Since yesterday. Nice, nice. 
Well, uh, what can I say except uh, I bid you both good luck. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's, uh, what is it, end of July right now? So, um, so yeah, end of April 2021. I'm hoping to, hoping to have a kid around that time. We'll, we'll see. Imagine that. A mini J running around. Yeah. F***ing with people in the preschool. <laughs> Daycare isn't going to know what hit it. Yep. My kid's going to be weird. There's truly no doubt about it in my mind. I wouldn't be surprised if my kid just walks into an Ikea, hides in a closet until uh, some poor soul walks by and jumps out saying, uh, I'm from Narnia. (laughs) Yeah, our kids are going to be the weirdest tykes in school. And we're going to be the coolest dads in town. Hanging out at the Froyo shop, getting all the toppings. (laughs) Having a kid is going to be memorable. That is for sure. For sure. But hey, no, this is actually a good conversation topic for us. We're both getting older, you know. It's time for us to start settling down and getting serious. Maybe we have a kid or two, but these kids, they're going to be born in a time where, you know, video games are commonplace, frankly. These kids will be playing some excellent violent games. How the hell do we feel about this? Yeah, I know. And that's actually why we asked listeners last week to send in their opinions. Like, we want to know if video games are too violent to be worth kids' time. Sure, we could just go off of our own gut instinct on the matter, but we honestly believe that it it takes a village to raise a child. And who would be better parents than the up-close and personal family? Approximately 120 people right now, and Soon to be 4,800 by next week. Well, yeah, 4,800 plus the original 120. So 4,920. All right, well, whatever. Let's just listen to some of these listeners. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Listening to listeners. No, oh, whatever. Okay. It is uh, horrible when video game users uh, commit gruesome acts of violence. I do not believe that it is the responsibility of video game corporations and companies to make their games less violent. I don't really think so, but I also don't really play violent video games. I I stick with Pac-Man, Tetris, and Big Dog, you know, classic like that. These kids really do be walking into prison and basically say, Hey! Can I get a 30-year stay? Late checkout, please? Am I right? We turn this shit like Motel. Mo Route 66. Please, I'ma shoot this hoe. Because I played video games once, period. I don't think video games are too violent. Actually, I think they're the perfect violence. Because it lets you get out all those inner tendencies through game without harming anyone. Don't think video games are violent enough. Maybe, I mean, should they be witnessing this crap? Maybe not at such a young age. But we also have to come to terms with life is very violent. Video games are just one medium and one avenue as to a sneak peek of what's coming later in adulthood. Video games are essentially art. So would you say Van Gogh is violent? No. Every time we have a negative thought, we are far more violent to ourselves than we could ever imagine in a video game. Some of the players in online lobbies sound like they're in elementary school. And when they kill me, the things they say are extremely vulgar and aggressive. I think video games are too violent. My nephew plays a lot of video games and he has become a a real thorn in my side, so to speak. All right, that was really cool hearing from y'all. But (laughs) can't listen to listeners forever. I mean, the listeners need to listen by definition. Otherwise, what would they be? That is an excellent point. But yeah, today on episode 16 of Up Close and Personal, we have a guy named Brandon. To us, he's just always been Brandon. A guy we've chilled with, gotten fucked up with, and hung out with. But whatever. We'll give you the whole spiel. 
Brandon is an American comedian, actor, and writer who works in the fields of alternative and observational comedy. His primary targets are adolescents, narcissism, current events, and um, internet culture. Current events? So, uh, news, I guess? In a nutshell, yeah. Brandon has been active since 2010 and was born in the Seattle area, actually, before um, moving to the northern Virginia area as a child. Wardell's career began at the age of 17 from the simple act of attending an open mic. Garnering local success, Wardell was scouted to perform at SXSW, where he quickly made a pretty solid name for himself. SXSW? Yeah, SXSW. I think you mean South by Southwest. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 right. So anyways, yeah, no. Wardell was scouted to perform at uh, South by Southwest, where he quickly made a name for himself. In mid-2013, an agent in Los Angeles noticed Wardell through, um, actually it was a Washington Post article, and promptly scouted Wardell to be part of his organization. After Wardell appeared on several podcasts, his work was noticed by none other than Bob Odenkirk. In 2015, he toured with Bo Burnham, one of our influences, and hosted Comedy Central's Snapchat series, Hot Takes. Wait, wait, wait. Wasn't that around the time Brandon made his um, his television debut on At Midnight? Exactamundo. Wardell did this on January 27th, 2016, when Obama was <laughs> quite active in executing his policies. I mean, Obama's still active, but let's just say his political power has waned a bit. President Obama is a powerhouse. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Or former President Obama, I should say. Obama was the first Democrat to secure two terms in office since um, President Bill Clinton. Or former President Bill Clinton. Sorry. Anyways, um, in 2016, Wardell went viral for popularizing the um, dicks out for Harambe. Cut to today, Brandon runs a podcast called Yeah But Still with co-host and frequent collaborator Jack Wagner. No relation to the German composer who was wildly successful at the height of World War II. As a podcast host himself, being a podcast guest, in this case on our show, should be a breeze for Wardell, who's used to chatting it up with entertainers, musicians, and thinkers. Another reason guesting on our show should be easy for him is, well, the personal element. Our own personal history with Brandon well, goes back to the L.A. days. California love. Matthew, keep it down. I'm trying to talk about my friendship with Brandon. Sorry. I've just always resonated with that song and, frankly, music in general. I understand. You seem to have taken a liking to music recently. and. I've noticed it's led to some positive benefits in terms of your creative work. Good to know. Good to know. I'll definitely make sure to fit in time for listening before writing sessions and just during my free time in general. My headphones and I are going to get to know each other real well. That's awesome. Dude, aren't you glad you listened to me and got that warranty on him? I told you to do that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I listened to you, and I got it, and I thank you. No problem. <laughs> Honestly, I'm down with whatever you have to do to get yourself creative. I don't give a f*** what it is. If I have to push you off a bridge or smack you upside the head, <laughs> I'll do it if it brings the funny. <laughs> Go easy on me, man. <laughs> I know I'm six two and a half and all, and you're only five six and a half, but you pack a powerful punch for your size. Nah. Eh. I'm a pacifist. I reach peaceful outcomes with even the most violent people of our time, including some hardened criminals. Yeah, you've got a, a really laid back side behind the facade. And violent men enjoy chilling with you. Eh. Yeah, they like me well enough. But you know who I like more than enough? Motherfucking Wardell! Welcome, Brandon Wardell. Thanks for having me on your show. It's great to see you. <laughs> this is awesome. 
Yeah, it's really great to see you too. I like what you guys are doing with this whole podcast. I've listened to bits and pieces. The Tim Heidecker app is really good. It's a great concept and it's well executed. Thanks. Yeah, it really is a labor of love for us. We work our asses off on this thing and I think it's really starting to show at this point. We're really starting to explore kind of this new territory in comedy and even redefining what's possible within the genre. That's awesome. I love that sort of thing. I have a really refined taste. I can't really get too much enjoyment off run-of-the-mill, bland comedies like Family Guy or Simpsons. I'm sure the writing staff are nice people with good families and all, but the characters don't really have an effect on me anymore. I know. The way the characters behave is super frustrating. Yeah, I saw Homer jeopardize his co-workers once, and I just shut off the TV. (laughs) That's a good strategy. Just in case you have one of those Nielsen boxes in your home, you want to get the ratings lower for drivel like that. Eventually, if enough people do it, the show will get canceled. I love when shows get canceled because you never really know what's going to replace it. There's this tantalizing gap where I project various fantasies on the slot, you know? I actually have an example real quick. Um, So, for example, um, when BoJack Horseman was canceled, I imagined a show about a detective taking its slot. That's nice and all, but how often does the Lord of the Rings trilogy get aired on TV? It'd be nice if they put that on for once. (laughs) Fuck, but maybe that's fantasy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, speaking of which, uh, Brandon, what are some of your personal fantasies? Um, yeah, I don't know. There's like a casino I always pass on the five south in commerce. Every time I pass it, I think today's the day I'm going to step inside. But something in me knows it's wrong. So I always just keep driving south on the five. But yeah, one day. I don't know if it'll be in my 20s or even my 60s. But one day I'm going to stop in. Or at least I want to. Even if I don't end up gambling, it'll be nice to know I can cross it off my list of places I've checked out. And at least see what they've got going on inside there. That'd be awesome. So, whoa, wait. Does that mean you've never gambled before, Brandon? Does that mean you've never placed a bet? I've placed bets, but never on anything official. Like with the big cats in Vegas or anything like that. Although, I did spend my 21st birthday in Atlantic City. Whoa, cool. Hey, city. Hey, city. (laughs) What, what? (laughs) Yep. Hey, city. So, anyways... Some buddies from Robinson Secondary School and I decided to go all out and secure an ocean view suite at the Sheraton Atlantic City Convention Center Hotel. We all had our own beds, so we felt kind of <laughs> uh, badass. <laughs> knowing that if we met anyone pretty, we'd uh, maybe be able to get lucky that night. <laughs> But uh, that night had other plans in store for us. Oh, no. (laughs) What did you have to eat for dinner on your big 2-1? Well, that's a complicated question to answer because there's a lot to answer. Okay, so my buddies and I went out for a multi-course meal. The way we found out about the restaurant was a funny story, actually. Um, Eric Wareheim tweeted about it once back in like 2010 and i had always been wanting to uh you know check it out with steve brule <laughs> <laughs> nice ref uh what dishes did you eat at the excellent restaurant duck and a sherry cobbler i love duck but if i'm going to eat something that heavy and rich i want something mildly palate cleansing a sherry cobbler is delicious with duck It's citrusy, but not overly boozy. That's awesome. But yeah, before we even get started on that, we got nachos galore. Okay, I'm a huge sucker for nachos. It's basically the sort of thing I crave on the reg. If you give me a margarita and a plate of nachos, my crazy mind chirps, yum. There really couldn't be a better pairing. Well, there could. 
but I certainly haven't had it yet. That checks out. Did you get full from those two dishes and cocktails? Not even close. I was 21, and even though adolescence is pretty much over at that point, the body still has some growing to do, so calories are in high demand. I was like a bottomless pit with the metabolism as fast as mother Usain Bolt on sport mode. And my similarly aged friends were in the same boat. So you kept eating and drinking? <laughs> with a little help from the waiters and waitresses, yeah. <laughs> And I bet some mixologists, too. <laughs> How ridiculous is the word mixologist? It sounds like something from a hipster's wet dream. Hey, I bet Portlandia could skewer mixologists, you know, if they were ever greenlit to produce more episodes. Eh, that would probably just be a hipster's dying wish. I wonder if the hipsters died from blood clots and lack of circulation in their legs. Yeah, um, it's called peripheral arterial disease of the legs, or PAD. Advanced PAD can cause tissues in the leg or foot to actually die, because they don't get enough oxygen as a result of poor blood flow. The number of cases in Silver Lake and Williamsburg has been skyrocketing, you know, ever since hipsters recently discovered skinny jeans. It seems irresponsible to wear skinny jeans in this era of COVID-19. Doctors shouldn't have to be dealing with this extremely preventable condition when lives are at stake. Damn, it really is unfortunate. It makes me feel grateful I'm not a hipster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a hipster either. I'm just a left-leaning millennial with a heart of gold. Same. I always vote for liberal policies and would never vote red. Or financially back Republicans. Cool, you'd never financially back them. Yeah, that's, that's nice. I mean, I'm, I'm not too political myself, but I do feel like these debates are pretty good for sharpening your ability to think on your feet. That's something I always recommend to anyone willing to listen. I learned that on the debate team at VCU. Go Rams! <laughs> Wait, hey dude, is Rodney the Ram really as chill as he seems under his, you know, mascot costume? Anyways... Back to my 21st birthday bash. At this point in the night, the mixologist started getting ridiculously creative. We ordered a few braised meats. They were good. They were very good. <laughs> but after a few gulps of Baltic-style porter, they were excellent. They were like going on a double date with Pamela Anderson, Mila Kunis, and Natalie Portman. Who's the fourth one? The, the, the fourth dater. Me. I'm on a date with Milo Kunitz. And Pamela Anderson and Natalie Portman are on a date with each other. Oh, cool. And you're all friends, so you're just like enjoying a night out in the town, right? <laughs> that sounds really nice. So, Brandon, a, a Baltic style porter is pretty heavy. You must have been getting full at that point, especially after you polished off those braised meats. Did you and your boys have any post-dinner plans? <laughs> um, does a kid go to school? Yes, a kid goes to school. Yeah! Yeah, we definitely had post-dinner plans. We had bottle service lined up at the Anthem Lounge at the Tropicana Casino and Resort. Holy sh**. Yeah, I'm telling you. My high school friends really care about me and wanted the best for me. Oh, that's really sweet. Are you still friends today? Um, not as much. We've kind of grown distant. Mm. It happens. It happens. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Once we stepped foot in the Tropicana Resort, we kind of felt like we were home or something. They really take care of you there and know how to treat you right, especially during a big celebration. So anyways... Cut to a few drinks later, and by the way, oh, did I mention we had a table? With bottle service, you get your own table, which is a major leg up in the club scene. So I ended up talking to some people I am attracted to. <laughs> I was quite a hit. I mean, it was my 21st birthday and all. <laughs> Hell yeah. What did you do with the people you were attracted to? I grinded with one person in particular to a rap song. 
It was a track off Drake. Nothing is the same. Oh, cool. Uh, how did the grinding go? It was <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it started out awesome. Definitely good times had by all. It was hilarious. My high school buddies were watching me do it and waving at me. I couldn't really wave at them back because I had to be focused, but it was funny to see. <laughs> Luckily, my dance partner didn't see, but then things took a turn for the worse. Oh no. Did you grind too much or too hard? Uh, yeah, you can say that. It ended up being bad for the exact same reason it was so good, ironically enough. Oh, so you were having a little too much pleasure downstairs, huh? Yeah, my thingy was having a little too much pleasure downstairs. Oh no. Did something happen? Yeah, Jay, obviously something happened. He said things took a turn for the worse. He must have accidentally ejaculated while dancing with that person he was attracted to. Yeah, something like that. I must have. All I know is my boys rushed me off the dance floor and whisked me off to the Sheraton gift shop. They gifted me a new pair of trousers and briefs, and before you knew it, we were back out on the town. It was like nothing ever happened. My friends from Robinson were just like that. Those slick f***ers really know how to take care of a dude. Uh, anyways, so Brandon, wh what have you been up to lately? Anything good on the horizon? Jay, hold up! I want to get back to that story about my party real quick. So my boys and I were walking around the streets of New Jersey like we practically own the place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my friends were crossfaded off booze and weed, and I had my own release of sorts at the Tropicana. So I was enjoying a near blissful state of relaxation. But then, of course, something had to come and ruin the vibe. Hunger pains! Of course we had eaten dinner, but come on, there's always room for a midnight snack. I consider the body to have two stomachs, one for breakfast slash lunch and dinner, and one for midnight snacks and desserts. Oh yeah, I have that exact same thing. Like two stomachs, like one for normal meals and another separate one for yummy treats. <laughs> I thought I was the only one who thought that way and expressed that thought pretty frequently. <laughs> yeah, so we started looking for an in and out. Oh, that's delicious. Um, hey, uh, did you know there's a secret menu there? <laughs> yep, I know. And I was hoping to get the animal style fries. It's not on the menu. Oh, cool. Yeah, so there we were. A trifecta of post-pubescent winos in all her glory. Roaming the streets of a city like... a city. <laughs> You're roaming the streets of A-City like Harold and frickin' Kumar. <laughs> but instead of a white castle, you and your friends were looking for an in and out <laughs> Bingo. But here's how you can tell we were drunk. We were looking for in and out not even realizing that's a SoCal thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, our drunk asses were dumb. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Anyways, what are you two bastards up to nowadays? I'm not bastards. Because bastards are when your parents are unmarried and don't use rubbers in the sack. Oh, right. Right. I, I always use that term too loosely. Um, yeah, none of our parents used rubbers, obviously. And they're all happily married. There's nothing wrong with sex in moderation, especially between loving spouses. Mm. But yeah, I mean, rubbers are an interesting topic. Like, what do you think about them? Uh, I hate buying them in person at the supermarket. It's so awkward. I always feel like I need to buy something else in addition to the condoms. I don't want to look like some perv, so I always just try to normalize the situation by just grabbing a curtain of OJ and a deck of playing cards along with it. Uh, and of course, you're always running the risk of running into one of your mom's friends in line. Like, 
Oh, hi, Mrs. Jones. Nothing weird here. <laughs> I'm just buying some OJ, a deck of playing cards, and uh, something else. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look! <laughs> wow. Yeah, one thing I don't get is that kind of condom that numbs your member. What kind of brainiac came up with that idea? Probably the same idiot that came up with the pet rock. Like, seriously, a pet rock? Some things we'll just never understand, my friend. Hey, um, I actually have a funny condom idea. So, yeah. So, condoms are like the opposite of Pokemon. Because with condoms, you don't want to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't want any of those STIs. Not even the treatable ones. Just sounds like a pain in the ass. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, come on. But yeah, one time I was riding in an Uber and you know how they sometimes have those bottles of water or chewing gum in the back? Well, this guy had Trojans. <laughs> I just had to admire this driver's sense of humor and actually gave him a fairly substantial tip after the ride was completed. <laughs> That's hilarious. I wish I had a driver like that. Someone with a great sense of humor who offered funny little items like um, condoms, thongs, and penis-shaped pasta. That would be amazing. I want a condom that has a picture of Donald Trump on it. And it says, this condom is huge. You know how Donald Trump says huge? The guy's a con artist. <laughs> yeah, I want a condom that has a photo of Darth Vader on it. And it says, Luke, I will not be your father. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, all right, Let's, Let's wrap, wrap this up thing the up. interview. Wait, wrap it up? Like, wrap it up like, what, like a condom? Come on, Brandon. Uh, come on, Brandon? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's not how you meant it, and you definitely know it. Get your mind out of the gutter, my friend. <laughs> all this condom talk is really starting to get on my nerves at this point. <laughs> Nonetheless, this has been a good interview. Yeah, no. Honestly, we want to thank you again for doing our humble little show. Um, hey, is there anything else you want to plug before we wrap up? Uh, no comments on that, please. <laughs> yes, I have a podcast called Yeah, But Still. It's pretty legit. Just Google it, and I'm sure you can find a way to listen. Yes. Uh, <laughs> As I said earlier, we really do want to thank you for coming on the pod. Um, great podcasters think alike, in a, in a way. It was my pleasure. I've never really had the opportunity to share that story about my 21st birthday before. And I also did enjoy discussing condoms with you both. As did I. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all.